Noah and the Northern Lights Dragon by me, Ka Vang, with illustrations by my good friend, Amy Haggerty Johnson. Clump, snap. The amber logs illuminate Shua's campsite and spat, crackle, clump, snap into the night air. Shua shut her almond eyes, recalling how she almost didn't get to go on her first camping trip. Grandfather says, Shaw is not going. Good mongrels, do not camp. Shaw twirled her jet black hair when she was scared, nervous, or anxious. Her mother asked permission from her grandfather and father to go camping in the boundary waters with them. Shua's mother says, Shua turned 11 two months ago. She can help collect firewood and clean your dishes. Every time Shua opened her mouth to speak, the men in her family stopped her. Shua's father parrots her grandfather, stating, Good mongrels do not camp. Her older brother sang also parrots their grandfather, Good mom girls do not camp. Her younger brother, Jong, shrugged his shoulders. The camping trip was important to Shua's family. It is the first time the Hmong family would go hunting and fishing since they came to America from Laos eight years ago. A single tear slipped down Shua's cheek. Shua's mother says, Shua, your name means voice in Hmong. Your voice will be heard. That night, Shua's mother dreamt a star fell from the night sky. It was a flaming kaleidoscope of colors hurling towards their family's campsite. That ball was caught by one of her three children. After telling the dream to grandfather, he allowed Shua to come on the trip. Grandfather says, as a shaman, I believe in the power of dreams. My shaman spirits tell me one of my grandchildren is destined to catch the flaming ball. Shua can come on the camping trip also. The family went camping with Mr. Grimm, their sponsor who helped them settle in Minnesota. On the first night, the sound of rustling leaves pulled Shua out of her sleeping bag, out of the tent, and into the blazing, colorful night sky. Her mouth opened into a big O as she stared at the streaks of red, blue, and green lines dancing across the night sky. Grandfather says, it's dragons. Mr. Grin didn't believe in magic. He laughed and said, it's the Northern Lights. He could not stop laughing at Shua's grandfather. 
Suddenly, a flaming ball appeared from the lights in the sky and whirled towards them. The ball almost hit them, but at the last moment, moved higher and passed over them. leaving behind a trail of smoke and disappeared in the black forest. That night, Shuo woke her younger brother Zhong and pleaded with him to help her find the flaming ball. Shuo says, being born a girl, I feel like a bird with its wings clipped. The ball is a dragon. If I found the dragon, grandfather and father will finally love and respect me. Shaw and Zhong found a baby dragon with a cut on its belly. A lightning bolt had struck the dragon's belly. The dragon looked like a serpent with dinosaur wings and legs. The dragon says, help me, I need to go home. Only a loon feather can heal my cut so I can fly home. In the morning when grandfather, father, older brother sang, and Mr. Grin woke up, Shua and Zhong were gone. Grandfather says, Zhong is the chosen one. He is with the dragon. Mr. Grimm reminded everyone that the Boundary Waters was a dangerous place with wild bears, wolves, and uncharted wilderness. The two young kids could be in danger, or worse, lost forever. Miles away on a crystal clear lake, Shua and Zhong laid a trap to catch a loon. Shua used a flashlight to blind a loon and pluck its feathers. Shaw and Zhong ran back to the dragon, knowing the dragon grew weaker by the minute. Shaw ran through a grove of northern pine saplings. The branches clung to her, imprisoning her as she struggled to break free from the grip. The tree branches scratched her skin and tore her clothes. After breaking free, Shaw slammed into Mr. Grimm. You're in big trouble. Come with me. No, I have to save the baby dragon. There is no such thing as dragons. Shua's grandfather, father, and older brother appeared. She ran from all of them towards the dragon. When the men saw the dragon, their mouths dropped. Shua took the loon feather and rubbed it against the cut on the baby dragon's belly. The wound closed and the skin healed.
Above them, the wings of two dragons cast a shadow over the land. The mother and father dragon landed next to the baby dragon. The dragons thanked Shua for saving their child. Mr. Grimm says, I believe in dragons now. Grandfather says, I believe girls can do anything boys can do, even saving a dragon. dragons offered to give Shua's family a ride on their necks back to their campsite. Shua's two brothers climbed on the mother dragon as Shua's father and Mr. Grimm climbed on the father dragon. As Shua and her grandfather climbed onto the neck of the baby dragon, Shua asked her grandfather to sit in front and steer the magical creature. Granddaughter, you should ride in front and lead us all back to the campsite. With Shua's family on their backs, the dragon soared into the sky. They cut through cotton candy clouds and bounced on lush green treetops. Whoopee! She finally found her voice. The End <laughs>